Thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Molly Flaherty. I um, am a veterinarian certified in canine rehabilitation, veterinary acupuncture, and chiropractic care. I will be seeing patients at the Veterinary Medical Center starting in August. And today I'm going to talk to you about rehabilitation therapy and how it can help your pet. I would like to point out that the photographs I've used are from a previous clinic I worked at in Chicago. Um, but we have plans for similar equipment and therapy options at the Veterinary Medical Center. So what is veterinary rehabilitation? Veterinary rehabilitation is the practice of physical therapy in animals. It's examining and evaluating patients with physical impairments, functional limitations, disability, and other health-related conditions to determine a prognosis, diagnosis, and intervention. It also helps to prevent injury and disability through the promotion of fitness. So first of all, I'm going to go over some of the conditions that we might treat. And um, probably what comes to mind first would be any kind of orthopedic surgery. We all know as a human, if you have an orthopedic surgery, rehab is usually going to be a part of that. Um, for animals, this is becoming more and more available and more sought after. Um, so post-operative rehab is going to help patients reduce pain and inflammation, reduce loss of muscle mass loss, improve range of motion, and an earlier return to function and maximize their outcome potential. Um, the dog in this photo had a cruciate surgery, which is a really common knee surgery in dogs, so that's one of the common things that we would see for treatment. Physical injury is another condition that we can treat. Um, this could be any kind of trauma causing physical impairment. Um, so if you have loss of limbs, brain strains, muscle injuries, even contractures from trauma, skin and, skin and muscle contractures. Um, we can treat agility and sports dogs injuries. Um, and long, um, we're working for long-term maintenance and mobility and compensatory issues in a dog such as this. So this dog has lost two, lame, two legs. Um, losing one leg would be sufficient reason for rehab therapy. Um, but in his case, what we're concerned about is how well his, his left legs are going to do over time. Is he was a young dog when he suffered his injury, but, and he was able to compensate very well and actually can, has really good mobility on, on two legs. Um, but we want to keep him mobile as long as possible and help to prevent um, problems and pain in those left legs. And um, he's eight years old now, and he still gets around really well, but one of the things we were thinking of when we first started treating him is getting him used to some type of an orthotic so that he has that available for him when he's older. So he was fitted uh, for an orthotic on his right rear stump. And, um, but for now, he's pretty happy getting around without it because he thinks it slows him down too much. <laughs> <laughs> but he, um, he also does like some swimming therapy and chiropractic care and massage. Congenital and hereditary disorders. So these are some conditions where we might see younger animals. Um, we might treat things such as spinal deformities, limb and joint deformities, and hip dysplasia. Those are some examples of things that would fall into this category. Um, this, this puppy had, was born with spina, spina bifida, which is a birth defect in which there's incomplete closing of the spine around the spinal cord. So she was born without function of her back legs. Neurologic disorders, um, this could be spinal disease, such as intervertebral disc disease, brain disorders, vestibular disease, where animals have loss of coordination and balance. Um, so some of the things we'll work with with neurologic patients, they're not only strengthening them, but working on their own exercises for balance and coordination, and proprioceptive responses, um, gait retraining, and also working with supportive devices as needed, so carts for more severe paresis or paralysis. So in these cases, we might be working with a post-operative surgical case to help them through recovery, or we might be work managing a lifelong disorder. Pain management is probably the most important benefit of rehabilitation therapy to consider for pets. Um, this could be pain from arthritis, 
muscle pain, spinal pain, injury, cancer, compensatory issues like we talked about with the dog with two legs. Um, pain is not always where we expect it to be. So we may have a, an animal that we know has had chronic hip pain in their right rear hip, but now we're actually finding the pain in their left front leg because they've been diagonally loading the weight off of that right rear onto the left front. So sometimes it can be a little tricky to figure out where that pain actually is. And sometimes the compensa compensatory areas can actually end up being more painful than where the original pain started from. Uh, what does pain look like? It's not always obvious in animals. Their instincts are to hide their pain. So some symptoms that we might look for will be laying down more, playing less, less interest in walks, behavior changes, appetite changes, um, difficulty rising or difficulty with stares. Um, sometimes we'll notice they're making different facial expressions more often, like droopy ears or arched eyebrows. Um, changes in posture, like roaching the back or altered weight distribution or other things that we might notice. And weight loss is um, something, it's another condition we can work with. We have pets that are overweight. Hydrotherapy is a great part of the weight loss program, and we can also advise on, on diet and caloric intake. Um, fitness and agility patients are great candidates um, if they've had an injury or even if we want to prevent injuries. Strengthening them can help enhance their, their performance. Now I'm going to talk about some of the modalities and tools that we use. Probably the first thing that comes to mind would be hydrotherapy. That's one of the, the most fun aspects of rehab therapy. Um, a lot of animals like water, or we like to see animals in water anyways. It's fun for us. Um, with hydrotherapy, we, we can use an underwater treadmill, or we can use a pool. And the water is warm, so it's comfortable. The great thing about water is that the buoyancy really supports our body weight. Um, for example, if we set the water to the hip level, that's going to support 62% of their body weight. So that's a really amazing tool for animals that have had um, just had a, a, or a surgery or um, have pain in their joints or they're a little bit overweight. So they can actually exercise without that strain on those areas of their body. And then in addition to that, we also get the resistance of the water. So we can get a really efficient workout in water um, that's much more efficient than land walking for building strength and also um, they're able to work without as much, without the pain and discomfort of the weight bearing on, on any sore joints. Um, pool as well is really good buoyancy. We might use that when we have an animal that is unable to bear weight at all because um, in the pool they're not going to be bearing weight. And it's also really great for muscle tension relief and spasm relief. Therapeutic exercises, this is the fun part where we get to be a little creative. There's lots of tools that we can use. Um, it allows us to focus on very specific areas. So um, we might have a particular muscle group that we need to strengthen or um, some stiff joints that we need to loosen up. So we may be doing um, some exercises in addition to some range of motion and stretching. Um, we've got lots of fun stuff we can work with, land treadmills, um, therapy balls, balance pads and balance discs, cavalettis, which are the poles they walk over, um, cones to circle around. Sometimes we'll set up a little obstacle course, um, but animals tend to really enjoy this. Once they figure out what, what we want them to do, they usually catch on pretty quick and um, are generally cooperative and, and have fun while they're at it, too. We can also teach people to do these at home, and that is uh, even better because of the more often they're able to do their exercises, the more benefit we're going to get. Therapeutic laser. The laser is a, um, a therapy laser that emits um, energy into the tissues that we direct it into. And when that happens, basically it's increasing energy at the cellular level. And when there's more energy in the areas that we're treating, it allows it to enhance healing, reduce inflammation, and reduce pain. Um, increased cellular energy has a cascade of effects. So it increases blood flow, releases endorphins, and reduces transmission of pain signals. We can direct this into bone, joints, muscles, tendons, skin, even wounds. Um, it's, it's not painful. They don't really feel anything except maybe a little warming. So it's um, usually um, animals are very cooperative for this therapy. 
Um, and it's often used more in an early part of habilitation program just to get some pain down, adjust the animals to coming in and getting treatment. And um, as we transition more into more active therapies, um, then we would start to phase this out a little bit and find a maintenance dose. Neuromuscular electrical stimulation is often referred to as NMES, and transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation is often referred to as TENS. Um, they both will look pretty much the same. Um, the NMES stimulates the contraction of an isolated muscle, so we might use this when a patient is unable to actively or effectively do this on their own. Um, it will use a low electrical current that's adjustable to get the amount of stimulation that, that's desired. Um, the TENS would be set up similarly, but the, the, it, we wouldn't get a muscle contraction. It's more for pain relief and to um, relax the muscles that we're treating. Acupuncture is most commonly used for pain reduction. Um, it stimulates the nervous system to desensitize pain signals, and um, we can also use it to stimulate healing when there's been a neurologic injury. Chiropractic care restores motion in the spine and joint, um, helps to relieve pain. Um, it's a manual treatment, so we're just using our hands. Animals generally respond to it and tolerate it very well. Um, it's really great for sports and agility animals, too. And of course, massage, um, we're all familiar with that. We use it for that retention relief. Um, we can also do some treatments to release the myofascial trigger points. Cold therapy is going to help to reduce inflammation, and heat therapy is going to help reduce tension. So all of those things help to reduce pain. And I'm going to talk about some of the assistance devices that are available to us that we might be um, advising on when we see a patient for rehab. Um, this dog has on some support wraps on her wrist. Um, these typically we might use the support wraps on the wrist or the ankle. Um, they're used for areas where the, the ligaments have become weak. And um, this particular dog had weakness in her back legs, so she had been putting a lot of weight on her front legs over time, and those ligaments started to stretch out. And um, so this helps to support her wrist a little bit. It's even better if you can start that, that before that happens. If you have an animal that you know is is weight loading onto one or more limbs, it's trying to support those so you can prevent the stretching of the ligaments. In orthotics, um, sometimes we need a more specialized orthotic. Um, we can work with orthotists across the country to custom make something. Um, this dog on the left had an injury on his right front leg, and he wasn't placing that all the way to the ground. So we had an orthotic maybe that helped assist him get to get that leg down, so we, we could work with him more effectively on his exercises. And the dog on the right had a shorter limb on his right rear than the left rear. So when we would exercise him, the right rear wasn't getting the full maximum potential out of the therapy. So we had a little boot made for him with a lift on it so he could also get more effective therapy sessions with him. And carts. Um, carts are for animals that have lost function significantly enough to require support, such as paralysis, but they could also be used in an animal that has um, some mobility. but um, for example, maybe a dog that can walk out to go to the bathroom but is too weak to take a walk, but with a cart, perhaps they could. So it might help them have a better quality of life so they can get out a little more. Um, and we can advise on manufacturers and help with fitting on these. This particular cat, uh, when I saw him, he was the first cat I ever put in a cart. He had been paralyzed in his back legs for three years and had just kind of been dragging himself around. I um, was perfectly happy doing so, um, and he was also an older cat, so I wasn't really sure how well a cat would take to a cart. You know, cats can be unpredictable, but he really amazed me. Within 60 seconds, he was zooming around in that, and it worked out really well. So he, he was a good lesson for me to never underestimate the cats. Um, cats can be they can be patients for rehab therapy too. They do great with acupuncture and chiropractic care and laser treatment. Um, even exercises, we have to be a little bit more creative. 
but there are things that we can do with cats. So they're certainly candidates as well. And booties, harnesses, and slings. Um, these might be things more that we would advise you on to use at home. Um, a lot of people have tile or linoleum floors at home, and the pets slip on those um, when they're older, when they're weakened. And when that happens, then they strain muscles, pull muscles, and then they're even worse off. So we want to try and prevent that. So having traction surfaces laid down in home and pathways where they're going to walk a lot, um, or using booties when they're outside walking. And harnesses to help you assist your pet, but also to help you so that you're not straining yourself as much when you're trying to lift your, your animal or help them up the stairs. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about pain management just to let you know all the different tools that we have. Um, it's a very important aspect of rehab therapy, and I think um, it's one of the things that's impressed me the most um, to, is m the ability to control pain better with different combinations of these things. Um, it's not just pharmaceutical medications that we commonly think of. Um, we can really maximize the effectiveness of our pain management when we pull out all these tools and customize and um, try to find the, the best combination for each individual pet. So in addition to pharmaceutical medications, there's lots of supplement options, um, acupuncture, chiropractic care, laser, TENS, heat and cold therapy, massage and stretching. Um, strengthening is also important because if we have, um, if we have weak limbs, it's going to put more strain on the sore joints. So um, helping to, to keep them strong um, will provide them with more mobility, better range of motion, and help reduce pain in sore areas. So what are the, some of the symptoms to look for that might indicate your pet has a physical ailment that could benefit from rehabilitation therapy? Any post-operative um, orthopedic or neurologic patient would be a candidate. Um, agility and fitness pets, weight loss. Um, arthritis is one of the most common things that I probably treat. It's older pets. Um, it's often overlooked until it gets more advanced. and. Um, it's great to consider trying to treat that before they have too many changes like loss of muscle mass and weakness. Um, we'll get better long-term mobility if we can catch it earlier and work with it. So some of the symptoms that you might look for would be gait abnormalities. That might be very subtle, like just a paw turning slightly or a mild head bob, stumbling, knuckling, scuffing, and you hear the ch ch on the floors as you're walking. Nail wear, it might be excessive nail wear on one or more paws. Um, weakness, muscle atrophy, um, difficulty or hesitancy with stairs, and difficulty or hesitancy getting in and out of the car. Um, trouble getting up, maybe they need a little help, or you just see them struggling a little more, um, laying down more, less interest in play or walks, and they're not getting out their favorite toy anymore. Um, slower on walks and weight gain because they're less active. So what are some of the benefits then that rehab can offer? Um, improved outcome postoperatively if we're working with a, a postoperative patient, um, reducing pain, improving mobility, strengthening, increasing muscle mass. Um, the dog in this photo, as you can see, has a lot less muscle on the left ear than the right ear. And if we measured this dog's muscle mass over the time, we would have found that as the left ear was uh, losing muscle mass, our right ear was gaining. So now this dog has this super strong right rear leg and he's just going to use that because that's the easiest thing to do. So our goal is to challenge him to get him to start putting weight on that left ear and strengthening it so that he can start to naturally balance things out on his own. Um, and another important thing to consider is if we don't do that, over time that right rear is going to take a lot of strain and then we may see problems in there. And then he's really going to be in trouble with a right rear leg that is sore and a left rear leg that is really weak and hasn't been used in years. Improving gait and posture, more energy, injury prevention, and weight loss. The dog in this picture is working on a posture exercise. Um, animals may tend to side sit or roach their back, um, and helping work with correcting their posture can reduce spinal pain and discomfort. So what can you expect in a rehab exam? First of all, thorough history review. We're going to review medical records. Look at any radiographs. We're going to talk to 
you, find out what your concerns are, what kind of goals you would like to reach. Um, a musculoskeletal exam where we're going to do a full body palpation. We're going to feel for heat, sensitivity, um, swelling, check their joint range of motion, where their weight bearing load seems to be. A neurologic assessment as warranted, which might include um, proprioceptive responses, checking nose, neurologic reflexes. Um, we're going to look at their, their gait and their posture. We're going to look at how, is, how are they standing, how do they sit, how do they transition from sit to stand or from down to up. Um, we're going to watch them walk. We're going to watch them trot if they're able to. And circling movement, sometimes we'll watch them walk in a circle. Because sometimes that will elicit some very subtle things that we're not seeing when they're walking in a straight line. I'm taking measurements. Um, in this photo, we're taking measurements of muscle girth. Um, we may be doing that. We might be checking joint range of motion measurements as well. We'll discuss any recommended treatments, um, how they're going to help your pet, um, talk about supplements and medications that we're recommending, and any recommendations for home care and exercises. The exam portion is generally about an hour, and then there may be additional time to start some therapy depending on what we found and what seems appropriate. And then um, we follow up with a, a treatment plan based on the findings. And um, eventually, we try to, to taper to a maintenance therapy. Once we start to see our goals being met, um, then we'll try and find out what, what we need a minimum to maintain this, um, which may include some home care as well, in addition to therapy sessions. In conclusion, um, most animals can benefit from rehab therapy at some point in their lives. So you consider rehab therapy for your pet. Um, if they're having orthopedic surgery, you can talk to your surgeon about it beforehand and let them know of your interest. Um, pets with any prior trauma that may have some chronic issues are good candidates. Um, think about rehab if you have an older pet that's showing signs of arthritis or slowing down um, agility or sports dogs for prevention of injuries. Um, you can discuss your interest in pursuing rehab with your primary care vet, and you can also call us at the Veterinary Medical Center if you have any questions. And at this time, I'd like to use the remaining time to answer any questions that you might have.